Lord Shiva is not only a deity of Hindus but also the symbol of dark energy and matter. More than 90% of our universe comprises of dark matter and energy. Both dark energy and matter do not come in contact with normal matter and that's why we can't perceive it. But it has a force which is helping in the expansion of our universe. All matter perceivable to us comes from this unknown source. The dancing Shiva, the Natraj, represents the changes in the universe around us as matter and energy constantly bump into each other, create and destroy systems and keep renewing the world. I suppose we can attach any meaning we like to this and the constant chatter of culture, the renewal of our population as people die and children and be born, the violent cosmological events that keep organizing and reorganizing the universe. Any and all of these interpretations are beautiful, powerful and majestic. But for me, there is one interpretation which excites me more than any other and holds a very deep truth in it. This cosmic dance is the interaction of matter and antimatter. Whenever we create new particles, we create them in matter and antimatter pairs. They are literally equal and opposite components that make up everything we see. When they meet, they destroy each other in a burst of energy. If that was all there to the matter and antimatter, it would make a rather beautiful cosmic ballet, but not an interesting one. The fascinating part of the story is when we remember that we have more matter than antimatter, which means that this particular cosmic ballet is unbalanced and the statue is a constant reminder of this fact. We don't know why nature prefers matter to antimatter and until we know why we can't really claim to understand how the universe works. We know how one mechanism has a preference, that is the weak force interacting with quarks, but this is much too small to explain the whole story. Whenever protons collide together at the LHC, we have to live with the fact that we are colliding matter with more matter in a detector made of matter. The particles that escape are not quite half matter and half antimatter, as we might like. After a while, all the particles, except the neutrinos, slow down, decay and hit some rock. They join the rest of the stuff around them and either annihilate or get comfortable and settle in the surroundings. All we are really doing is moving matter around in a very complicated way. Nature balances the books and every piece of antimatter we created except the antineutrinos gets removed from this part of the universe. The cosmic dance continues and if we are lucky enough, we get a simple and small glimpse into how it really works. On a tiny insignificant scale we work on, we don't see much of an imbalance at all. When we look up to the stars, we see matter everywhere we look, across vast distances and far back in time. Nature's balance sheet has a few implications for our physics. For example, every time we produce a Higgs boson, we also produce a lot of noise in the detectors as well. In a matter and antimatter collider, such as LEP or Tevatron, this is a less of a problem, since the Higgs boson is neither matter nor antimatter. It's equal amounts of energy and is equal to both. To create a Higgs boson, we would need to create at least one antiparticle and that takes a lot of energy. With this extra particle, we get a lot more particles for free, leading to all kinds of noise. So in the light of the day, when CERN is teeming with life, Shiva seems playful, reminding us that the universe is constantly shaking things up remaking itself and is never static. 
For more interesting videos like these, please subscribe to our YouTube channel Science Mysteries. And goodbye for now.